You have a really interesting perspective on interest rates. Could you share your perspective on interest rates? Because I think it's a little bit different than the average out there. Yeah, I was telling Greg that my first property I bought in 1989 and my interest rate was 10.79%. And pretty much every property I bought up until I, even after that, if I got anything close to 7%, I thought I was doing really well. So I refinanced that property a couple of times, did some cash out refinancing. But you know, when interest rates, we got comfortable, 7% was always considered good. I can I concur. When I started to invest in 2006, my interest rates were seven and a half percent. And I thought those were good. And the reason is because those are good. If you look at the last uh, 30 years, the average uh, rate, the average interest rate of a 30 year mortgage is 7.8%. So I know that we're all a little bit shocked at how much interest rates have risen since they were unbelievably low a year or two years ago. But reality is that we live in a country where because of the way that our financing is structured and the government that supports the financing structure of residential mortgages, we are able to get incredibly low interest rates compared to everybody else in the rest of the world. And to add to that, Greg, the other thing is I was paying 10.79% interest. The reason I bought that property was because my mom strong armed me into buying it because the property was so undervalued. And she said, this thing's going to be worth a lot of money 5, 10, 15 years from now. So I was actually cash flow negative on that property for the first couple of years until I refinanced it. But the way my mom was phrasing it to me, which I now believe is that was just one class. I mean, I might have been cash flow negative, but I was working. I was making money. And that $300 a month negative cash flow turned into positive cash flow over years. But the equity I was building up in that property with the mortgage pay down, the tax savings. And then when I refinanced it down to 7% years later, and I was able to pull out cash, I had so much equity in that place, I was able to spin that into other properties years later. percent, right? So many folks just get so focused on cash flow. And the reality is like, guys, we're, we're talking about like 25 bucks a month of positive cash flow, 100 bucks a month of positive cash flow if you're lucky somewhere in the country where you don't have great management in place. Even if you get positive cash flow, it's not like it's going to change your life like Michael's life has been changed, right? Michael did not focus solely on cash flow when he got into real estate. He focused on five profit centers. And that's why now he's sitting here and was able to retire three years ago because of those wise investments. Michael, I think your experience is a great opportunity for people to shift their perspectives. We talk about shifting perspectives on cash flow and focusing on those five profit centers. I mean, where do you think you'd be if all you focused on was cash flow in the beginning? Uh, I would have never bought that first place, which means I never would have gotten the second or the third place. (laughs) I mean, I would have waited. Literally, Greg, what I would have done was I would have waited for the numbers to quote unquote make sense. But, you know, again, my mom said, this place is $79,000, but I ended up selling it for $275,000. So I made $200,000 on capital gain on that. But because of a 1031, I paid no tax on that $200,000. Brilliant. It's brilliant. And that's the thing, right? In the stock market, we talk a lot about stock appreciation, right? And we say, oh, geez, I can't wait for this stock to go up. I can't wait for this stock to go up. We don't talk at all about cash flow in the stock market. (laughs) People aren't saying, listen, I'm not buying this stock because it doesn't give me enough cash flow. I can guarantee you that. But you flip the script to real estate and rental property specifically, and the consistency of home price appreciation over market cycle is uncanny. It happens every market cycle. It is like death, taxes, home price appreciation over 10 to 20 year cycles. But for some reason, people are like, I don't want to pay any attention to home price appreciation. I just want to focus on cash flow. And I want to throw this asset class under the bus because it doesn't give me enough cash flow. What do you think about that? Are people crazy out there, Michael? I think people are crazy. And anyone that's interested in real estate, obviously the master of it all is Robert Kiyosaki. His quote is, it's not how much money you make, but how much money you keep how hard it works for you and how many generations you get to keep it. And that was my goal. 